Hey guys, it's me, Bittersteel, back with another video for Hearts of Iron 4. Now today I bring to you South Africa, which can only mean one thing. That's right, we are going for the Crusader Kings 2 achievement. We will have to complete the anti-colonialist crusade, release the countries of Angola, Congo, Kenya, Mozambique and Zimbabwe, and last but not least, we have to control the Greater London Area either us or someone in our faction. That sounds like a very tall order, but thanks to some help from our community discord and a member named Antasil. Big shout out Antasil, thank you so much for helping me with this achievement guide. I've managed to piece together somewhat of a decent guide for this achievement. But first, if you like these videos, leave a like, consider subscribing and check out the channel for some more similar videos. Also uh, hit me up on Twitter if you're into that and we've also set up a Discord. So if you want to find a place to hang out and talk Hearts of Iron, maybe set up a multiplayer game, check out the links in the description below. Now, on to the video. Now be warned, the AI is going to be the AI. Nothing is ever going to be identical to this run. But after a few play test runs, this is the setup that will work best, even if it's not 100%. There will always be a little RNG involved, but this will help you get on your way regardless. Let's hop right in. South Africa, we turn Iron Man mode on. We also turn historical AI on, as I like to have my games be predictable when I'm going for achievements. And let's see what we have here. Let's start out with the military. Just assign all of them to a general. The army can be set to permanent exercising until we have five army experience. Next up, construction. Let's start off with a single civilian factory down here in Natal. Then research. We will start out with some construction here and follow up with electronic engineering in our second slot. Next step focuses we will go abandon Westminster and then straight into empower the workers we will be turning communist as soon as possible looking at our production not much that we can do here we only have the one factory but let's look ahead to the future you will need a few more factories on guns and we will also be requiring some artillery I think this is a good place to start and that's the initial setup done now we wait until we can go on our civil war three days later and with electronic mechanical engineering done we will head into mechanical computing and with empower the workers done we're one step closer to our glorious communist nation we can't proceed down the tree yet so we'll head for south african railways first and we'll use that 150 political power to get ourselves a communist revolutionary this gives us access to the communism decisions we will not be opening up political discourse no we'll be going for the um the other option and that we finished construction let's pick up production with a nice 50% bonus. Not bad at all. A few moments later. So now we have 50 PP. Let's prepare for civil strife. What you want to do is hit expand civil support twice to bump you down to below 70% stability. And then we can ignite our civil conflict here. The South African Railway is done. Let's repeal the Native Representation Act. Now, as for industry, I would usually go with this first, but since we will be sticking to a relatively small core territory, concentrated is the better option, giving us more factories in our very few states. We will be having a lot of puppets, but not a lot of land we control directly. With mechanical computing done, let's head for the key to our victory, submarines. I'm gonna start making them early, we'll need them. We also have five army experience, so we will no longer be requiring the services of the military. We can simply disband and all these units. There we go, we have repealed the Native Representation Act. We are ready to ignite our civil conflict. However, I'm going to wait for this factory to finish construction in six days. We won't lose any time on the focus. Six days isn't a big deal, but if we fire the civil war now, the construction here would be canceled. I don't really understand why. It just happens every time I do this. So I will simply allow this factory to be built and then we move on. 12 seconds later. There we go, the factory has been built. We can ignite our civil conflict. Our country has been split in half. Keep the game paused, I have a few things to do. Go into the division designer, create a new empty template, a mobile cavalry unit with just a single unit of cavalry in it and save. This is why we saved up that five army experience. See how many we can train up. Yeah, eight. Let's train up eight and deploy them in Port Elizabeth on high priority and immediately push them out the door when we can. We'll be rushing the um, other side's victory points. They won't have time to get any units out the door anyway. As for focuses, let's expand the mining industry. 
two more civilian factories sounds great. As for construction, we will be building military factories, followed up by naval dockyards. A lot of naval dockyards in future. So two mills and one dockyard, and we'll be filling our other coastal provinces with dockyards. Before we unpause, let's have a look at Spain. Spain will be key to our victory. Ideally, I would go to war with the nationalists. However, I have no realistic way of defeating the nationalists after many, many tests. It's just not worth it. So we will be declaring war on the um, Republicans instead, like the good communists we are. Now oh, the game thinks we're still a democracy. Just just let a day tick by. There we go. Justify a war goal on them and we'll, uh, we'll be tag teaming them with the nationalists. And this is also the point where I like to create an intelligence agency. This agency will be beneficial to us in future. There we go. We can squeeze all those horses out. Don't worry about these you. UK units, they're not involved. And simply rush your horses to Cape Town. Maybe assign them a general. We could go with George here, or we could go with a new commander and make George our field marshal because George is level four and he gets a few very nice traits. There we go, we walked into Cape Town and that concludes that civil conflict. The horses did well, we won't need horses. We will simply turn all of these units, all these eight units into the district force. The district force being this template, we will build on this template, turning it into a 7-2, just your basic infantry template. These eight units will be our elite force. For the African front, we will be using the district brigade, so start training a few of those as well. We will need to have roughly 12 to 15 out the door by the time we're ready to tackle Portugal. District brigade isn't particularly great, it's only six combat width, but as our stockpile of guns and manpower improves, we will uh, improve this template as well. But uh, first things first, we need to get guns to our troops in the field. With our intelligence agency in place, we can recruit a spy. Just pick whoever you feel is most suitable for the job and we'll deploy them in Portugal. Portugal will be our first target and a little bit of espionage will help in the coming battles. With the mining industry expanded, let's unironically support Spain. Yes, we will be supporting the, um, the Republicans upon who will be declaring war. Don't question it. Just go with it. And with our submarines done, we can start producing some of these soon. Could go for 1936 submarines who are much better, but we also need to work on the army. So I'll be getting a radio first. That additional reinforcement is huge. Sadly, we don't have any dockyards yet, so I can't start pumping out submarines until we have some dockyards and some naval experience. There we go, support Spain done. Gives us this event with three options. Either we get the option of sending volunteers, Mm, no thanks. We could give up 5,000 manpower or we could do nothing at all. You might be tempted to do nothing at all since we will be going to war with the Republicans anyway, but I suggest taking the second option. This will cause us to give up 5,000 manpower, yes, and we will be supporting an enemy, sure. However, once the Spanish Civil War ends, these guys will be returning, giving us a national spirit, which will improve our military overall. So I think it's worth it. As for our next focus, we will be taking infrastructure effort followed by armament effort. Build up the nation with concentrated industry done let's get improved machine tools we need more guns production 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 and 150 pp let's invest that in the silent workhorse improving our pp these tiny district force units the three battalion units can just be deployed on your african borders with portugal with improved machine tools done it would be nice to work on the industry but with war on the horizon it's time to improve the army let's get the weapons and equipment equipment first. And the radio out of the way, let's get those doctrines in. We'll be going superior firepower as Grand Battle Pran, not that great. Mass assault, not my style, and mobile warfare, not feasible. So superior firepower, the bread and butter of small nations. Another 150 pp. Let's bump it up to limited conscription before we go to war. We don't have a lot of manpower more manpower would be great. With armament effort out of the way, let's head over towards a seaward defense force. This will give us a naval dockyard and some naval XP. We can start pumping out submarines. Eventually. There we go. Our justification on the Republicans is finished. They're still clinging on in Spain, so there's some time to make a little bit of an impact. Let's immediately declare our war. Let's have a chat with Franco here. We will be asking him for military access, which he will grant 
because we are both at war with the same person. And we'll also be improving relations. We want the Spanish to be our friends. And we'll send the eight elite units over to Spain to get some experience. Now note, we don't have a great deal of stability or war support, so we're not in a very good state right now. We could improve it with work conditions, but I'd rather spend a little bit of political power on the army first and on our laws. This is something to watch out for in your game. If you feel you want to improve this first, be my guest. There we go, our units have arrived in Spain. Now they will be making a huge impact. We'll mostly be using the Spanish war to level up these units so they're no longer green. And it was our ticket into getting naval access and military access from the nationalists. We will need that to take on Portugal. So what we will be doing in Spain is just small scale operations aimed at improving our own position. Just get our units some experience. Don't go too gung-ho and waste equipment. We are already quite short on most things to just take it easy, get a few easy engagements in. And with the Seaward Defense Force out of the way, let's head for Special Service Battalion, giving us 10 army experience and a bonus for land doctrines. Pretty good deal. And now that we have a dockyard, let's start making some submarines. We can make early submarines. We just need to slap on some torpedo tubes. Et voila. We'll be pumping out as many of these as we can. They're not great, but they're all we can realistically produce. And with that first infantry equipment done, the 1938 stuff is a little bit ahead of time still. Still. Let's pick up artillery first. And with the special service battalion done, it's time to head back to the uh, political part of the tree and burn the king's portraits. And with the first doctrine done, we have a bonus for the second doctrine. Might as well pick it up. A little bit extra work. Not bad. And another batch of 150 PP is available. Let's get a chief of army, a maneuver guy or defense guy. I think I'll take the maneuver guy. And with our interwar artillery improved, it's now 1938. We can start taking some more infantry equipment. There we go. We've burned the king's portraits. Time to head further down the anti-colonialist crusade. Okay, I believe these units are experienced enough for our needs. We've picked up a nice bit of army experience, not too much. So I'm going to leave the nationalists to clean up this mess on their own. We have other targets. Let's uh, take the port of Cadiz and launch a naval invasion into Porto. Let's also improve this division a little bit. We can add on support artillery. We're not lacking any of that. So that will give them a little bit of extra bite. And we can also add on another unit of infantry. We're still lacking some infantry equipment, but we're producing it rather quickly. And more political power means we can improve the army some more. Yes, army regrouping, please. Now that all of our troops that are deployed are equipped, so these eight units all have a nice full yellow bar. It's time to uh, force these smaller divisions out the door as quickly as we can. We are nearing our war with Portugal and we want to have some units on these front lines here in South Africa. So just deploy these. It's not a major front. The AI is not likely to launch large scale operations. We just need them to sit there and take it. And with these guns done, let's head on to the other infantry equipment. We want the army to be in as best a shape as we can manage. And as I said before, the volunteers from the Spanish Civil War return, giving us a nice 5% division organization. Not bad for 5,000 manpower. That's two techs into the superior firepower tree. The next one is going to be a little bit too expensive for our tastes. Can't afford that just yet. Artillery is ahead of time. We're working on the infantry equipment. We could get some more industry, but I think it would be a good idea to get better boats early. And with our next batch of 150 political power, we now have the war support because the world tension has shot up dramatically to go up to partial mobilization. Not a bad deal. With the union of the African people out of the way, it's time to make our first move and liberate the Portuguese colonies. Portugal is first to fall. We have 14 of these uh, rather terrible units out the door. They're all green, but that's enough to man our front lines. I've shortened the northern one. This province is a little bit irrelevant. Should have enough troops on the line to hold the Portuguese at bay. At least long enough for us to mess with them in their homeland. And these brave souls will make that landing. They will try to hit Porto and then quickly capture the victory points required to capitulate Portugal. Let's also improve these divisions a little bit more. Let's add some artillery onto it. A little bit short, but I think we can take the hit. 20 minutes later. Now, as our war with Portugal draws closer, we will need naval superiority to pull off that naval landing. We only have two subs, but that will be enough for now. 
Let's send them to the port of Cadiz. And because the Portuguese Navy is not out at sea, we have 100% naval supremacy. This will change when we declare war, but uh, the AI usually messes up its fleet enough for us to be able to launch a naval invasion. There we go. Liberate the Portuguese colonies is done. Let's move on to the Belgian colonies next. That's right, Belgium, we're coming for you. Now all that's left to do is to declare war on Portugal. Now let's uh, first set off this naval invasion, giving it the um, best odds of actually leaving the moment we make our declaration. Then we go into uh, Portugal and declare our war. And take the speed way down. This is very micro-intensive. No, the unfortunate. Portuguese AI has decided they're having none of this. So yeah, we don't have the naval supremacy. We will get it once they send their fleet back to port, but uh, until then, yeah, good luck. We have improved infantry equipment done. That finishes out the infantry tree. Let's get some, uh, let's get some research. Unfortunately, there's really not much else to do but wait until they send their fleet back for some repairs. Uh, 1936 hulls are done, so I have submarine twos. Let's work on the industry a little bit. Let's also start production of a new boat. Let's finish the one we're making. Let's make a new design here. Better torpedoes, better engines. This is absolutely not required. This is just something I like to do. Just make these ships as good as I can. And start making the new ones. 20 minutes later. So yeah, they finally shipped their fleet back to port for a second, giving us enough naval supremacy to get the naval invasion going. Unfortunately, that took almost 70 days and we have to liberate the Belgian colonies next. Not ideal. We'll see what we can get out of this. Like, ideally, you would have to instantly declare war on Belgium, but uh, that's going to be a tall order. We still need to finish off Portugal. We'll see what I can manage. As for political power, what can we do? What can we do? We could get industrial concern. Could pick up an elusive gentleman. Ship designer might be nice. Chief of the Navy, not bad. I think instead we'll do some war propaganda against Portugal and improve worker conditions. Let's get the war support and stability. And now let's take the speed down now that the naval invasion has gone off. After we liberate the Belgian colonies, it's time to head down the War Measures Act. Let's head all the way down to expand the Cape Core. Let's check out Belgium. No guarantee on them yet. Portuguese are attacking me in the south a little bit that's uh, fairly irrelevant really okay so we're now engaged in the naval invasion of porto and unfortunately two of the units on the tile are actual decent combat units and one of these cazadores or casa I, I don't know these are very shit tier units we have to break them through the liberal use of force attack what might happen with Belgium is France or UK could guarantee them because world tension is over 25%. We're not justifying on them through conventional means, so the AI won't respond to that, not to our focus. But it is possible that they will immediately plop down a guarantee once we get our war goal. So meaning the um, focus finishes, the game needs a little bit of time to process that, like maybe a day or a few hours and the AI will start throwing out their guarantees. One way to bypass that, if you notice that happening in your game, is when the focus finishes, you are immediately awarded to war goal. Just instantly declare war before the AI has any time to process and throw out their guarantees. This didn't happen here, so I think we're in the clear. Six hours later. Very well, 32 days after we started our naval invasion, we have managed to land in Porto. So it only took us 102 days to get this far. I really, really dislike the AI. And they're immediately attacking us. Yeah, thanks. That's that's gonna help a lot. Alright, what we're gonna do here is immediately start fanning out, pin them in place, and uh, aggressively push for victory points. All that matters is that we take some victory points quickly. We want to capitulate them as fast as possible. Make these small attacks to pin their divisions in place. They're not meant to defeat them, just keep them where they are while we do our thing.
little bit of micromanagement. You can see it doesn't really take that long to knock out Portugal. The hardest part will actually be launching the naval invasion, which is very luck dependent. I'm sorry, I wish I had a better way for you. Maybe if you build a cruiser instead of an early submarine. Oh well. And uh, getting the landing. If you're very lucky, their port is not guarded. If you're a little lucky, they only have a shit unit on it. If you're very unlucky, they actually have combat divisions on the ports. We were very unlucky, but still, we're managing, but not as quickly as we'd like. And now that we're making such headway on their European territory, I wouldn't want them to pull out all of their colonial troops, so we'll go on the offensive in the colonies as well. Meanwhile, the Navy should stay in place with a convoy raiding order, trying to pick off or at least slow down all the units they keep sending back home. There we go, we've taken enough of Portugal's victory points and they have capitulated. Great, not as fast as we'd like, but still good enough. What we want to do is take all of the territory in Africa and this one here as well. Oh yeah, they have a little bit of Angola here as well. While we're here, might as well take it and we'll puppet the rest. That is Portugal under our belt. We'll immediately redeploy the African divisions to the front with Belgian Congo. We'll take our army in Portugal, set up a naval invasion order from Porto and hit these two ports, Ghent and Antwerp. We'll just declare war right away, get them out of our hair. So these guys will prepare a naval invasion order. The Navy will be convoy raiding all provinces along the way. The Belgian Navy is literally non-existent, so this should be easy enough. And you'll notice that after we have taken those provinces off of Portugal, we can liberate them in the anti-colonialist crusade decisions. This is what we'll be doing with all of the territory you liberate. Just have a quick check every now and then if there's stuff here, we can can click I think that's three we can liberate these three countries and when I say liberate I mean turn into a puppet don't do it manually don't go in the occupied territory tab we're not touching this for anything in Africa we need to liberate them via these decisions to count for the achievements we have another batch of political power ready to go maybe a chief of the navy I'll take a navy chief I think while we wait for the naval invasion to be ready don't bother with taking anything in Congo. We actually want the Belgians to keep funneling troops into this area. Every soldier that's in the Congo isn't in mainland Belgium. And when we hit mainland Belgium, that's it for them. Okay, we finished our concentrated industry. From this point onwards, I'm not constantly going to be repeating what you need to research. You'll have to figure it out for yourself. I would recommend staying on top of doctrines when you have the army experience for the boosts, staying on top of doctrines for the navy as well, focus on convoy raiding, keep getting better submarines, get your best submarines out the door as quickly as you can, subs will be our lifeblood. Other than that, keep the infantry equipment up to date, keep the artillery up to date and keep the industry up to date eventually all right naval invasions ready let's fire this off and see if we can uh, knock out belgium quickly okay looks like we're landing pretty quickly let's keep pushing 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 as you can see all of belgium's victory points are in the north so capture these victory points above the river muse and uh, you've got them with their pants down and they have very few troops left in this area i think they ship most of it off to africa There we go, Belgium capitulated very quickly with most of their army being stuck in Africa. And again, just take everything they have in Africa. I don't recommend puppeting Belgium. The Germans will do their around the Magino focus, giving them a war goal on Belgium. Not a great outcome. Instead, just annex all of Belgium. Just, just take all of this. Now with the area under our control, a few pointers. I would not recommend manning this entire line. With our eight divisions, nothing's gonna happen there. That's not, uh, it's not gonna work out. Rather, I suggest just sticking to the ports and maybe holding on to Brussels to control the Vlaanderen region up here. That way the AI France who will be declaring war on can start walking in until they meet Germany somewhere in the middle and the Germans can do their regular push on 
Paris. Yes, we will lose control of most of Belgium, but uh, once the war is over, control of it will revert back to us. Let's uh, liberate the Congo and Rwanda and Burundi. So that's uh, several colonies in the bag. Now we'll just set up the African divisions around this southern tip of the UK's territory. We don't need to man the borders where the former Belgian and Portuguese colonies were. We'll be releasing those as puppets and we'll not be calling them into the war, meaning they won't factor into uh, any of the future combat with the UK. We'll keep training some units here until we have at least two full armies. While we're at it, let's change our divisions a little bit, improving templates. Our elite units can have some more artillery, bringing them up to 7-2. Uh, We'll need to produce more artillery to make that work. And our shitty African units, they can have some more infantry, bringing them up to 10 combat width. And we'll have another 150 political power. Now, I would like to go up to extensive conscription for the manpower, but we can do that later. It only requires 20% war support, so we can still do that after we declare war. I am going to bump it up to war economy now because we need, uh, well, 50% war support. We're never going to get that while at war. War economy first. Also going to start splitting off some units of the African core. I have some ideas here. About what to do next. I would recommend launching a naval invasion. We want to hit this region, Kenya. We need Kenya for the achievement and unfortunately Kenya is very close to Italian territory and in the current version of the game 1.9.3 Italy tends to do very well in East Africa here. So the idea is to launch a naval invasion and take the port of Mombasa, which is also a victory point. If we can take this and quickly push out, even if it's just one or two tiles, we should secure the area of Kenya for us. The rest of these areas are not as much of a problem. Sure, the UK might funnel a lot of troops in, but it's very easy to cut them off and um, they'll be undersupplied because it's a terrible supply region. While we'll be fighting close to our home front with very small units who should not suffer from supply issues that much. Now as for the naval invasion, we could set it up from our own territory here in Durban. It's a bit of a longer way, that's not ideal. We could also use this port here in Mozambique. But we have to wait a little bit. If we set up the order now, and Mozambique is freed and becomes our puppet. All orders in the area are deleted. So we'll have to wait another 90 days and then set up our naval invasion starting at this port. I would recommend using this one. That's a lot less territory to cover. It's easier that way. Let's also pull the navy back and uh, set them to convoy raiding on the East African coast. Now at this point, I like making a little bit of support equipment. We took quite a bit from the Belgians. This will give us the option of adding a few support companies to some of our templates. I haven't decided which, but I like having the option in future. Ah, there we go. The events for the African countries are starting to roll in. These are the events that we need to use to free the countries. Otherwise, they won't qualify for the achievement. So we have two options here. The top option will release them as a puppet, while the bottom option releases them as a faction member that is free. I would recommend releasing everyone as a puppet. That will still qualify for the achievement and make our life a lot easier, seeing as we can just take their manpower instead of ours. And it just blocks off a lot of the um, movement the UK can do in the area, provided we don't call them into the war. Now that Mozambique is free, we can also use their port as a staging ground for our naval invasion at Mombasa. Now, if you want to use your puppet's manpower, just go into your division designer Hit this and pick the country you'd like. Pick someone with a lot of manpower. I know Angola and Mozambique have roughly 30,000 manpower without bumping up their conscription laws. That's not great. The Congo has roughly 80,000. Uh, Portugal, not sure really. I should check. Yeah, Portugal doesn't have a lot because they have a lot of deployed troops already. Anyway, you go in here, you pick the country and you take one of these templates. Just simply copy it over and you can edit it as you like because they are released from our territory. They are released with our division templates in place. So these are the ones we use anyway. And we can simply swap these out for those other nations use their manpower instead. There we go, the Germans have declared war on Poland and started World War II. Let's see, after we expand the Cape Core, we'll be going after the British colonies and get ourselves involved as well. Now again, this is uh, rather unfortunately up to AI behavior. 
once again we need Kenya so we'll have our fingers crossed hoping that Italy does not push hard towards Kenya we'll see what happens I can't offer any guarantees that they won't but uh, I've set us up with the best option of taking Kenya as soon as we can and we have some more political power here I personally like to play with spies quite a bit so I'll just get an elusive gentleman now as for future political power investments I'll leave those entirely up to you good ideas would be design companies and the military theorist and keep an eye on manpower because you will have to bump up manpower laws a few times south africa does not have a lot of base manpower there we go we are ready to liberate the british colonies it's time to end centuries of oppression and return freedom to the people of africa we will be striking at the French and the British, the historical colonizers of this continent. Let's set right an ancient wrong. All right, before we declare this war, let's have another quick overview. Their troops are most likely deployed against the Italians, so they're not going to be near our borders right away. That said, I am going to pull a few of these units off the line to guard our ports. I would very much not like the UK or its dominions to suddenly start landing troops behind our backs were not really equipped to deal with that. I'm also going to put a division on the capital just in case they land next to a port and rush the capital. Would not be a good idea. I can always pull this unit off later. As for Kenya, the divisions are ready to launch their naval invasion. We should have naval superiority in the region. I don't think the Royal Navy is here. They're not in these ports, I can see that much. And even if they are in the area, it will take them time to arrive because I think there's a fleet here near Madagascar. But by the time they arrive to the East Africa Sea Tile, our divisions will already be on their way to hit Kenya. I don't know if they guard the Kenyan port. Sometimes they do, sometimes they won't. But if there's units here, they will most likely be pulled towards the Italian front or they'll start pulling them south to contest our major push into Botswana and Rhodesia. To the north here, I have decided to pull these units out. I uh, much rather have them sit somewhere safe, such as Portugal. We will not be calling Portugal in. Uh, if they put them here, we'll be at risk of the French overrunning us, which is not entirely likely. But to get anywhere sensible, we'd have to run a gauntlet of the Royal Navy and we'll lose a lot of equipment along the way. Not a good idea. So before we declare war, I will be pulling these units out of this area first. And with that, we are ready. It's showtime, boys. Don't call your allies in. We will keep our puppets out of this. This will narrow the front and it will give us far fewer ports that we need to defend. Now, as for focuses, I recommend investing a little bit more in the industry focuses first. We will need a lot of equipment to uh, support our drive on the UK eventually. Okay, so we had a good bit of luck here. I don't see any units in the tile, so we can take the port and immediately start pushing in. We'll have to hurry because the Italians are on their way. We need to capture these two victory points to control the area. We need Mombasa and Nairobi to control Kenya. So right after the naval invasion lands, start your drive on Nairobi. Very important to take that area. Other units can simply start fanning out and taking as much of the territory as possible. Ideally linking up with the port in Dar es Salaam, improving our supply. And after we control this area, we'll push towards Rwanda and Burundi and cut off any UK divisions still stuck in the south here. And seeing as we no longer need the ships in this area, I'm gonna pull them back towards the Cape of Africa and start convo raiding here. A lot of traffic passes through here. This is a good place to get some kills, especially should the UK lose control of the Suez. Now, as for our European divisions, we're gonna set up a naval invasion order. We'll have to hit the um, UK mainland. I'm going to start in Porto and I will opt to hit the area near Liverpool and try to cut the island in half and then work from there. I would recommend against hitting the southern ports because the English Channel is very, very unsuitable to submarines. Submarines are great, but the UK Navy is gigantic and we need every edge we can get. That's why I opt to land from the western approaches that doesn't have such a negative modifier for submarines. One thing you might not want to forget is to leave garrisons at the ports you conquer. 
we would really not like the UK and its dominions to start landing troops. While you're working your way through Africa, you'll notice you'll start getting more of these decisions available to you. I recommend taking all of these right away, because if we wait until the eventual peace deal to take these decisions, we risk the Axis taking the area and we don't want to go to war with the Axis again. I mean, maybe you want to, but uh, it's going to make the achievement a lot more difficult. This way, we can liberate the African colonies we need and then hit London. At that point, all we have to do is control London for a second and bam, that's the achievement in the bag. Now, ideally, we're going to London to take the rest of the country, but should the invasion fail, but you do take London, at least you'll have the achievement. Right, I'm gonna stop my offensive in the south here. I will focus on cutting the UK off by closing the gap here. That will shut all of these units out from supply and then we can come in at a later date and just sweep them away when their organization is whittled away to nothing. I don't wanna throw men and equipment away at this if we don't have to. We control the ports and if we can close these gaps, they will not be able to get any supply in any way. Okay, so far so good. Once the units in this pocket here starve out and we can close the pocket, that will be the territory we need for the achievement. We need to control Angola, which is done. Congo, also done. Kenya, we control it, just need to release it. Mozambique, already released. And the area of Zimbabwe down here, we're working on that as being released next. After that, we just need to be a faction leader, which we are of the African People's Union. And last but not least, we hit London. Now, ideally, I would just hit the port here and push right into London, but that's not realistic. The channel is really, really not suitable for our submarines. So we'll be hitting the UK from here and uh, hope that works out. It should work out. Our divisions are pretty good. And once we can free up these African divisions, we have a lot of troops to work with. Many months later. Well, it looks like Italy was able to close the gap up here. With little luck, they'll be able to push all the way north and clean up the UK. From Africa. That means we can free up another 24 terrible divisions to send towards our European front here. Now naval invasion is turning into quite the pain so I'm gonna give it a go over the English Channel and hope that the German Navy or Air Force might want to get involved in this. Getting the naval superiority is the hard part. There is a lot of RNG involved because our Navy is so small we can't really make a huge impact. We just have to rely on the AI being stupid and moving their fleet away. Let's see if we can uh, maybe get naval superiority in the English Channel. Like, it's, it's really not ideal for our ships. The submarines do poorly in this area. But I'm not having any luck with the western approaches. Iberian coast, easy enough to secure, but it appears the UK has a lot of their fleet in this area. Most of their home fleet is at home, which is a bit of a problem. Oh, happy days. It looks like that worked. With invasion support on, we were able to get a quick tick of naval supremacy in the English Channel. I believe that's because they actually have the most of their fleet where we were active, like the Western approaches. That's the hardest part done. Now it's just time to uh, micro the UK into destruction. Another stroke of good luck here. The UK did not garrison the port of Dover. If they do, just use the force attack button to uh, push them out and quickly expand. Speed will be everything. They will be responding to this. Now that we have made our landing in the south, it's not going to be possible to cut the UK in half so we'll have to be pushing up north. It's very important that we secure enough supply to support the rest of our army that we'll be shipping across as soon as we can and to take the Greater London area. 
if you want to win the war, we need to capitulate them. If you want the achievement, well, we just need to take the Greater London area here. It's the area around London. We have already liberated all of the countries we need for the achievement. We just need London now. We've managed to get a foothold on the UK. It's time to send the rest of the military over. We'll need a lot of these divisions. It looks like the UK is lightly defended, but I'm fairly certain they're going to start pulling a lot of troops from the rest of the island, especially because I see they have lost control of Egypt or most of Egypt. That means they don't really have any regions to put troops and they're going to focus virtually entirely on the home islands. This is going to be a very tough fight. I'm not entirely sure we can capitulate them in time. It's uh, the 21st of January already, which means the US is only a few months off. And if the US joins, there's no hope of us winning this war. We might be able to take the islands, but the US is going to funnel so many troops in here, it's not going to be winnable. So we have to take the capital quickly for the achievement and then try and push on towards this line and hope to capitulate capitulate them before the West joins. This is going to be very spicy, very interesting. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, 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 okay. Good news, good news. We managed to take London. So as far as the achievement is concerned, we have control. Yes, we have control of the greater London area. We can take that off and we have liberated Angola, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, the Congo, or just Congo, Zaire, and Kenya. We've also completed anti-colonialist crusade, and we are a faction leader. So that is Crusader Kings to complete. With that achievement in the bag, let's try and finish this run, see if we can knock out the UK before the US gets involved. Like a lot of these UK divisions are low strength, I think they either force deployed them or they've come from overseas and ran a gauntlet of German submarines. Oh, we're hurting them now. This is very micro intensive. Don't just set battle plans and let them run. You're guaranteed to get the floor wiped with you. But if you carefully micromanage your divisions, you should be able to create small gaps, dive through them and just throw the AI into, into disarray. Encirclements are gonna be key here. I think we can take him. Yeah, we're getting close, we're getting close.
Okay, quick overview. We just need 6% of their victory points to make them capitulate. I think Birmingham and Liverpool should do it. They still got a lot of troops. This encirclement really did help though. If we can kill this off, that's uh, several hundred thousand of them gone. We are going to win this. It's now March 18th. We still have a bit of time before the US shows up. Well, unfortunately, as you can see, the game bugged out just as we were capitulating the United Kingdom. Something went wrong with the engine and the game thought we were still in the Allies, or so I assume, and the Axis have gobbled us up completely. I think this is uh, Italy occupying our territory. Yeah, and the Germans managed to get uh, most of the United Kingdom. That's a very unfortunate bug. However, I still feel the guide is sound. It works. I did win this war, even if the game disagrees. The important bit here is to free all of those African countries before you hit the United Kingdom and to just rush London quickly if you want your achievement. As with all these guides, sadly, there is a bit of RNG involved mostly regarding what Britain does with its home island and how you can manage to get yourself naval superiority. I hope that despite those troubles, this guide helps you. I had a lot of fun creating it. This is one of the harder achievements in the game. If you want to see more achievement runs or more challenge videos, leave a like, hit me up in the comments with your suggestions and consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. Try to also hit that bell icon so you get notified whenever I put out the new guide. If you didn't like the video or if you think I do things wrong, just tell me in the comments. I'm always looking to improve. Nobody's perfect. This has been me, Bittersteel. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.